Imagine looking at yourself through the mirror. Imagine looking through the mirror and looking at yourself. And you look straight into your eyes. Are you determined you want to be honest and be truthful with yourself? If you are to be truthful with yourself, depending on where you are listening to me from, since this period of lockdown, what exactly can you say honestly that you have done with your life? If you wake up in the morning, immediately you wake up, what do you do with yourself? Or what do you do with your time? Do you know that the same 24 hours that God gives to every woman upon the surface of the head, in every continent, in every nation, in every, from every tribe and from every language? It's the same 24 hours. But it is not your own responsibility. It's a gift of God to you. What do you do? Immediately you wake up with your time. What do you make? How do you invest that same 24 hours? Since you wake up this morning now, what exactly can you say to be truthful? Just look at yourself. Go in front of the mirror. Look at yourself eyeball to eyeball and be honest with yourself. That since the time you've been at home, whether you're at home, if you're going to work, well, maybe this might not really concern you. It might, it might still concern you to some extent. But if you have been home, Maybe you're a student, or you're a professional, you're a worker, but maybe this, you know, the, the, the season, the lockdown, has restricted your movement and has restricted your activities. You've not been able to be active the way you ought to or the way you have always been. Now you ask yourself, what exactly have I been able to do with the 24 hours? Multiply it by the number of days you've been at home. Thank God we have been surviving. Thank God. God has been feeding us. Anyhow, at least we have survived till now. But if you are still at home, it is never too late for you. Know that God is bringing this word to you today. It's a challenge to you and I. Like I said, the same 24 hours each and every one of us have. From every continent. It is now our own responsibility and it is our own duty to see how we em employ, how we invest this time. To use it so that you know our 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 life will be meaningful, our life will be lived on you know purposefully, and our life now will be able to be, you know, a, a, like a guide to other people, will be a pointer to other people, to point other people in the right direction. But you can't point other people in the right direction when you yourself you are still wandering about, you know, like a headless chicken, running around. You might be within the house, but you are running around. Even your mind is wandering about, your, your, your soul is wandering about. There is no peace for you. But you must have, you know. The scripture tells me in the book of Proverbs 24, verse 3, that true wisdom and house build it. And by understanding it is established. True wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, I'm encouraging you now to ask for the Bible. Says that if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask for me. The same time you and I, we are told at this season that we are saying, no, we are not doing anything. Many of us will go online and be taking pictures, you know, selfie, shooting our mouth out and, you know, posting all sorts of pictures. When the Bible says that in the same Proverbs 24 verse 1, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. You go online and all you do is to be competing. Somebody wear a particular clothes, you want to wear the same clothes, you want to show off. Even what you don't have, you want to show it off. When the Bible says you should not be envious of the wicked one. This time, pray for wisdom of God. Be honest with yourself and ask God. Say, God, give me wisdom. It is never too late for me. To be able to reorganize and be able to rearrange and to be able to, you know, to be able to rediscover myself. So that I can live and look back and say, this is what the Lord has done. This is a challenge to me, Lord. It's coming now and I thank God that it's never too late for me. To be able to do something worthwhile with myself. This challenge is coming to me, Lord. Help me to be able to do something meaningful with my life, something meaningful with myself, even now that I'm at home. Let me discover the secret things about myself that I'm yet to know. Let me discover the me that, that is yet to be known to me. I want to know me. I want to know myself. I want to know more of myself. I need your wisdom. That is a true wisdom in house is built. We need the wisdom of God for our life to be able to shine the way God has ordained it to be. You and I, we need the wisdom of God. 24 hours, what have you done with it? And what are you now planning? 
if you have not been able to do anything with it, multiply it with the number of days you've been at home. Do you know that the time of recession, when people are saying, oh, there is a recession, things are not going the way it should be, money is not flowing, this is not flowing, do you know that that is the time that uh, just a, a very few percentage of people, that is when they come, you know, to the reality and they come to the fullness of their potential and the fullness of your life, of their life. Do you know how they do it? Because they spend time with themselves, they spend time and they ask for the wisdom of God to be able to see Things that other people are not seeing and to be able to think the way others are not thinking at this time. For you to see what others are not seeing, you must be able to think the way others are not thinking. You need the wisdom of God. To be able to think outside of the box. To think in a new light, the way you have never thought before. For new ideas and new, you know, new things to begin to come to your mind. You might not be able to go out to go and work at this time. But do you know that there are so many things that God can use this time for a time. It can be a time of preparation for you. For the days ahead of you. Because before any manifestation, there's always preparation. Hallelujah. Before you can experience manifestation in any area of your life, be it physically, financially, before you can go and start a job, you need a new job. Before you can go and start a job, you need to prepare yourself. You need that time of preparation. Maybe you to know more about the company or the, you know, the organization you want to go and join. You need time to be able to search and to find out. To do your research and to do your findings, your expectation. What are the expectations? What are the things that is expected of you where you are going to join? You want to start a new business? You need a time of preparation. You know, to do your groundwork. You want to start a new career? You need a time of preparation. But you cannot, be, the same time you need to prepare, you cannot use the same time. You know, investing the same time or wasting the same time doing things that are not meaningful doing things that are not adding to your life but rather they are taken away from you anything that is taken away from you it is not necessary in your life you need things you need the wisdom of god to you know to invest your life in such a way that your life you every single moment something is added to your life since this lockdown started, I know by the grace of God, the things I've never, I, I was never able to, able to do before in my life, that now I can say by the grace of God, I have better understanding because I wake up every single day, I make sure that even if it's just an hour or two in a day, I make sure that I'm able to do, learn something different and do something different. So you now ask yourself, like I said before, look at yourself eye to eyeball. At times, we don't like people telling us the truth. We get angry when somebody look at us and look at us and tell us the truth. We become angry. But look at yourself eyeball to an eyeball and be truthful with yourself. If you want to get angry with yourself, go on and do this and do so. Be angry with yourself. But the most important is for you to be able to be real. We are talking about reality now. This is a challenge for you and for I. For myself, that we need to come out of our comfort zone to be able to do things that others are not willing to do, to be able to think the way others are not thinking, that is thinking outside of the box, coming out of your comfort zone. I remember there are some, some years ago, there are some things that ordinarily I never imagined I could do in my life. But God in his mercy took me out of my comfort zone. It wasn't pleasant when it started. God has to move me from the midst of people and I find myself, I can, you can call it like, I, I, to me, I was lonely. I find myself in an entirely new environment, new, you know, in a new setting. That I have to start life all over again. But I knew that God is using that to prepare me. Like I said, there's a time of preparation that you and I need for us to be able to go into the manifestation of the plan and purpose of God for our life. And if you, if you run away from that time of preparation, then you can never go into the fullness of the manifestation of the plan of God for your life. But it is my prayer for you today, as you are listening to me, that God, no matter whether you like it or not, that God will take you out of your comfort zone. Even as you are hearing this word, this word will steer. It will trigger something in your mind. And it will make you to be able to see with the highs, you know, not with the, high, not with the usual highs now. Then you'll be able to see things clearly the way God wants you to see. God will give you a new eyes. You will have a new eyes and a new understanding of the will and plan of God for your life. Just a very minute percentage of people will be able to see differently from the way others are seeing. All so, so people are concerned about this now. Well, how I'm going to eat, how I will not die. There's nothing wrong with us feeding ourselves, but we can't continue to eat. And Bible says that we shall not live by bread alone. If all you are concerning about is how to eat and eat and eat during this time, hello, you will eat and eat and eat. Then after you finish eating, what happens with your life? 
We can't hit all through life. We can't play game all through life. You can't watch music and you can't watch or you know Netflix or you can't do. You, it's, it's like you are you are you are misusing or you are wasting the investment of God, which is your time, God giving time. Once it's gone, any hour that takes away from your life or from your time, it can never be recalled back. But the question you will ask yourself is that when you look back, what have you done with those hours? I'm believing God for you and I that God will give you understanding. God will give you understanding and He will give you new insight. So, so, so that you will begin to walk in the wisdom of the Lord. The same Proverbs 24 verse 14 says that, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off.